All right, so we have Barbara Green with us today, and I'm gonna be asking you a couple questions about resurrection and your time here. Okay, okay, sounds good. So how long have you been a member of this church? Well, I'll be 70 in September, and I was born into this church, so I guess I would say 70 years. Wow, awesome. <laughs> My so, whole life, I'm a lifelong member of resurrection. There you go, that's yep. very impressive. Thank you. Um, with all that time here, what are some of the activities that you've done to participate in church? Um, I was a Sunday school teacher. I served on church council. Um, one of my things that I'm most proud about is I started a men's softball team. Right. Pastor Bolick came to me. We had a lot of young couples in the church with young children, and he was trying to think of a way to get them interested, to, to stay in church, come to church, be involved with the church. So we started a men's softball team, and we had a great time, and it was a wonderful way to um, get people interested in staying in the church. Awesome. That's really cool. I yeah. mean, I would, probably would have never thought of doing something like that. So that's really cool. Yep. Um, so obviously you've done a lot, but what would you say has been one of your favorite memories? Um, I think, of course, my wedding. I'll be, right. be married 46 years uh, next month in August. And, um, and then the birth and baptism of both of my children here at Resurrection. Um, and then when Sandra Pritchard, our organist, asked me to play the timpani right. because we have this beautiful timpani set and she asked me if I would play it and I said sure I'll give it a try and that's been over probably 15 years so that's right. I love that and I do think the congregation enjoys it oh for sure I can attest to that <laughs> one um so what is something that you would say is like the best thing that we do here at church I think we're very welcoming right. I think when we have uh, visitors in our church we all try to go around and introduce ourselves, make them feel comfortable, right. and hopefully encourage them to come back. Because being a downtown church, our membership needs to keep expanding, growing, growing yeah. and growing. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to make them feel welcome and encourage them to come make this their church. A lot of them are young students, college students, or military, and they are away from home mm -hmm. and so I think the, the home aspect of it to where they feel like they are in a good environment sort of a home environment and I know I've taken some of them on home with me on Sundays for our Sunday dinner you, right. you remember yeah. Nicole mm -hmm. she came and we had her Thanksgiving because she couldn't be with her family yeah. so we had her be a part of ours so I think we're a very welcoming church that's very good I hope yep. we continue to do that yep. um but with that what's something that you would add to our church to make it even better than it is? Um, well, I think we're very well-rounded, frankly. We, we deal with our young people very well, our youth, they're very active. Um, our, we have a Luther Legends group, our senior group, probably maybe the young adults. Uh, I think they've tried several times to, to have groups. Right. And, uh, then the pandemic hit, and so everybody's kind of been knocked back a little bit. But um, Maybe maybe expand on that, but I, the other thing I like is we've gone to one service now, and we're getting to know people that we wouldn't necessarily know that went to the early service. And I know I've I've mentioned it a couple of times. I've welcomed them, and they were like, "I'm a member. I go to early church." I didn't know that, right. but that's okay. I know them now, and I think having the one service is really beneficial to get to know everybody in the congregation. Yeah, yeah that's really nice, and mm -hmm. maybe we'll keep that. Um, okay, so since you have been here for a good Ever. amount of time, <laughs> Forever. what are some things that have changed over the years that you appreciate that change or you've just seen a little bit of a difference in a positive way? Um, <clears throat> well, when I was in youth choir, we sat up in the front right. and we would be on stage, so to speak, and our parents would always cringe because they wondered what we might do. <laughs> right. Uh, but then we got our beautiful organ, and it's in the back of the church now, and the choirs are up there, and um, I think that's just really, you know, very special. It's a gorgeous organ, and our organist, Sandra, can really play it, and she right. does a great job, and um, I'm glad to be a part of that. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing is um, having communion every Sunday, going to the Lord's Supper, I think is, is very important for our congregation. We used to do it once a month. Mm -hmm. We used to do it every other month, I mean, every other week, you know, twice a month. And then um, Ms. Enan, Rosemary Enan, a lifelong member, 
um, when she was on council, encouraged us to go to every week. Right. And um, so that's what we do now. And, and I think that's very special to everybody to commune every Sunday. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So one, only a couple more questions. But um, okay. <laughs> so what do you think, looking into the future, what are some changes or progress that you think our church will make down the road? Well, I think getting members in here is going to be important. Being a downtown church, I myself passed a couple of Lutheran churches coming down here. Right. Um, but I, when I walk in that back door and I see our church and our altar, and it's just breathtaking. And I think if we can you know, get people here, I, w I want to see this church survive. So I think reaching out and, and helping our membership grow is, is a real priority mm -hmm. for this church. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, okay. So... Moving on a little bit, has God um, kind of challenged you or pushed you to try something that's different or new out of your comfort zone? <laughs> well, I think the Tiffany's one of them. Um, yes. <laughs> I, <clears throat> I actually don't read music. I hear music and pretty good with music. But Sandra's been most helpful and, and very understanding and patient with me. But I feel like I'm really serving the Lord you know, through music, and I think that's that's important for our church because we're very liturgical, and our music is is one of the highlights of our church. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um. So, has anything inside this church pushed you to do something different outside of church? Um. Just you know, trying to <clears throat> disciple and be a, a good person, and and invite people in. Our uh, secretary, our good friend Carolyn Gary. And her daughter Kate were two that I invited many years ago, and as you know, they're both very active in our church yes. and a very big part of our church now. So I think that that's something that you know we don't go out and just wave flags and say come in here. We we kind of just invite them and let the church take care of it from there, right. and it does. Awesome. And that's important. Yeah. Yeah, that is really cool. Mm -hmm. And then my last question is, what um when you're telling your family or friends about resurrection, like what are some things that you'll mention? I always mention that I am fourth generation out of six actively attending resurrection right now. My right. grandfather's parents started here, my grandfather, mother, uh, my son um, was baptized here, conf confirmed here, and now my grandson is active, as you are, the sixth generation as well. Right. So um, that just that's my comfort zone, and I tell people it's a very family-loving church. Yes. Yep. Awesome. And come be a part of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Great. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome.